let's do number two. So in this section, now we're talking about larger and smaller numbers. We're trying to find these two. So if you want to define them, L would be the larger, uh, S would be the smaller, or you can name them something else. But in this, it says the larger of two numbers is 7 less than 3 times the smaller number. If the sum of the numbers is 61, find the numbers. What do we feel is important there? Adding 7 less than 3 times the smaller number. Okay. All right, what else? Sum of the two numbers is 61. And what are we looking for? Just the smaller number? Or both? We will eventually be finding both. So in this case, because we're finding two things, it's going to be set up similar to the uh, perimeter problem, but different at the same time. So this first part, the larger of the two numbers is this part. So I know L is going to be something to do with this. So I know three times the smaller number, I would be multiplying those two together. Yes, yes. And in this case, the seventh, the less than part is not your inequality symbol, but it's actually going to be subtraction. But in this case, because seven comes before less than, you're actually going to put it behind the three times. So it'll be three times s minus seven. So that'll be our equation for the first part. And then if we are looking for the sum of the numbers, what operation are we doing? Addition, yes. So we're going to add the larger number and the smaller number to get 61. Now, just like with our perimeter problem, because we know that this is our equation for L, we're going to take this and put it in for L, replace it with 3s minus 7. You can put parentheses around it, but you don't need that. And then we have some equation. What would be our next step? Okay, we could do that. We could also do something with these s terms. What could we do with those? Say that again. Put them together. Combine the terms, yes. So this would be 1s plus 3s, so 4s equals 68. Yes. And then divide both sides by 4. What is s? smaller number, 17 is the smaller number. Now that we found our smaller number, how could we go back and find the larger one? And um, minus 17 plus 61. So that is one way we can do it. How could we use this though? Fine. Yes. So you have a choice. You can put 17 in for s here and figure out what that is, or you can put 17 in for s here and then subtract it. Either or. I'll write both so you see them both. What is 
is L. Forty-four. Forty-four. So, what we said, I didn't have one. Mm -hmm. I went down to step. Yes, forty-four. Did we all get forty-four? Do we have any questions on that? We're going to do a perimeter problem on the back. Let's do number 11. For number 11, the length of a rectangle is 3 centimeters less than twice its width. If the perimeter of the rectangle is 18 centimeters, find its dimensions. What's important here? 3 centimeters less than twice its width. What else? The perimeter is 18 centimeters. And what are we looking for? The dimension. So both the length and the width. Right? Again, this first part is just talking about the length. The length of a rectangle is, so that's going to be a L equals, but in this case we're talking about length, not larger number. How would I set up this part? Three centimeters less than twice its width. Three centimeters less than twice its width. So tell me exactly how I would write that. L equals two two W minus three. Yes, like that. Two W minus three. So then we have our length equation. We need to remember our perimeter equation. P equals two L plus two W. And then we can put in the actual perimeter, 18, and we can put in the equation for L. But put that in parentheses. Okay, what's our next step? How do we solve this? Distribute the two. So we have 18 equals 4w minus 6 plus 2w. I'm going to move this up here so it's easier to see. And then what? 4 plus 2. So we have 18 equals 6w minus 6. And then? You can add 6 on both sides, yep. So we have 24 equals 6w, and then we can divide. What is w? 4 what? 4 centimeters. So that is one of our dimensions. We have to go back and find our length now. How do we do that? Or in for W here. You can do it here too, but then you're solving a little bit more. You may want to not. So if we put 4 in for W, what is L? 5 what? 5 centimeters. And then if you were to draw a rectangle and put the lengths on both sides and the width on both sides and add it up 5 plus 4 plus 5 plus 4, you should get 18. Or if you put those back into this, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 5 is 10, 10 plus 8 is 18. So it works. Any questions on that before we move on? Go on to the other packet. 
So now we're solving more multi-step equations, but now these have variables on both sides. So we're going to talk about how to solve those. Uh, the objectives are the same. These two are the same, except now you have this extra one in there because it's talking about different types of solutions. But all of them are related to multi-step. So this is, these are the steps for this in general. They're very similar to how we were just solving them. But if you like this mnemonic and it will help you remember it, use this. Don't call me after midnight. Stands for distribute. Combine like terms. Move the constant or the variable. by adding or subtracting. And really we're going to do this twice. We're going to distribute if we can, combine the terms if we can, move the constant, and then go back and move the variable by adding or subtracting. And then once we've gotten the variables by themselves, the constants by themselves, then we can multiply or divide. or divide is the very last one. Yes. Say that one. What does the first M say? Move constant slash variable. Move constant slash variable. Yeah. Move constant slash variable. Yeah. Okay. Move constant slash variable. Then we're going to put this into motion in the example on site. So we're going to distribute both of these at the same time on both sides. So that we're multiplying those numbers on the outside to everything inside to get 8x plus 4, bring everything else down. So minus 2x equals 8 plus 4x plus 20. Then combine like terms on the same side. So we see a bunch of x's and a bunch of constants very, uh, terms by themselves, but we don't want to combine like these two or these two just on the same side. So what are the like terms on just the left side? 8x and negative 2x. What about the right side? 8, 8 and 20. So we're just combining whatever is on the same side. Do exactly what it says. 8 minus 2 to get 6x and then 8 plus 20 to get 28. Once you get to this step, you have options on what you want to move, the constant or the variable. Your goal is to get all the variables to one side and all the constants to the other. It does not matter which side you do that to. So someone picks one of these terms to move. The 4x, okay. So if I'm moving the 4x, I'm going to move that by subtracting and rewrite. And because I moved the 4x to the left, I now have to move my constants back over to the right. So I'm going to subtract the 4 over. So that I'm left with just variables on one side, just a constant on the other side, so that I could get the variable by itself by dividing. So that x equals 12. What questions do we have on that so far? We did these, we did some of these last time, but they didn't have variables on both sides, so now we're just going to kind of go through some of these now. Properties of equality are the same, they're just variables on both sides now. 
mine up here is kind of blurry, so I would look at yours because it should be more clear. So the first one is still the original, the given. What changed between step one and step two? Minus the 2k on both sides. So that's your subtraction property of equality. And then step two to step three, what happened there? Added four on both sides, yes. So your addition property of equality. And then step three to step four. Divided. Division property of equality. Divide both sides by eight. Okay, questions on that before we do five? For number five, same thing, number one is the given. What changed between step one and step two? Minus 5n on both sides. Subtraction and property of equality. Step two to step three. Divided both sides by seven. Division property of equality. And then in, from three to four, what happened then? They flipped it. So that's your symmetric property. That's just saying I can take x equals six and do six equals x. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter. If you have a preference, sure. If it doesn't matter, then it doesn't matter. Okay. I want you guys to do number seven, and then we'll come back and talk about it in just a second. Double check your answers with mine. Did we have any questions on those? So on to the next page. And I want you to find any questions you want to see, do, go over, have questions about, not sure where to start, anything like that. Yes. Four. We're not going to do seven because they'll be similar. Any others? So when you see a problem like number four, where it's a fraction that equals another fraction, or proportions, 
you are going to cross multiply. So take this numerator and multiply it to the opposite denominator and vice versa. Take this denominator and multiply it to this opposite numerator. When you do this, you have one of two choices. You can go directly into um, after you've multiplied it or you can rewrite it first and then multiply. So I'll rewrite it first. It does not matter which side you put whatever on. But once you've rewritten it, then it's out of that fraction. So then it's just like a normal problem where we distribute on both sides and solve. So let's do that. Step. I'm going to show you how to do this. Previously, we did it in two steps. I'm going to show you how to do those two steps simultaneously, and then you can choose whether you want to keep doing that or keep doing it in two different steps. Pick one thing you want to move. The 45 just by itself or with the x? Okay, so if I move just the 45 by subtracting to the right, since I move the constant to the right, I have to move the variable to the left, and we do that at the same time. Just to kind of make this go a little faster. So then those cancel, those cancel, and I'm left with 18x equals negative 54. And then we could divide both sides by 18 to get one. The check yourself works the same way for this. You would put the negative 3 in the original back end for all the x's and then simplify it, or you can do it after you distributed and see if they equal on both sides. It's okay. Questions on that one before we do 6? So then for 6, we have another fraction that equals another fraction. So what's our first step? Cross multiply. Diagonally, not directly across. So 8 to n plus 8, 7 to n plus 10. And then, oh, this is what I was talking about earlier. You could rewrite it first and then distribute, or you could go ahead and multiply it out so that you start right here. Either one is fine. So for this, we have 8n plus 64 equals 7n plus 70. What do we want to move first? 64. Okay, and no one has to do this the same way. If you want to pick a different one, that's fine. So let's say I move 64 by subtracting, and then I have to move the 7n also by subtracting. So we get n equals 6. You can put 1n, but you don't need that 1. Questions on that one? Nine is similar to the problem example we did on the first page, where we could distribute first the eight to everything, the negative two to everything. Be careful with your negatives here, so that we get eight y plus thirty two. Sorry, minus two y plus two equals seventy minus. What would be our next step? Sorry. 
do exactly what it says. 8y minus 2y, 32 plus 2. We get 6y plus 34 equals 70 minus 3y. And then what do we want to move first? Say that again. So, 3y, okay. So, we could add that to both sides. And subtract 34 at the same time. So that we get 9y equals 36. And divide both sides by 9. What is y? Questions on that one or other questions on this page before we move on? At what point? Right here, right here. Right here. So we added 3y on both sides and subtracted 34. Size, you will end up with special cases. So we're going to talk about those two. They won't really look like they're special cases just by looking at them. You would have to start solving them and then you'll recognize certain things. So the two special cases are going to be these two. We're going to start solving this just like normal. So for number one, go ahead and distribute. And combine the terms. It's still going to be out there. My apologies. Before we keep solving, what stands out about this right now? They both have fives. So when you see something like this, where they both have that same coefficient, the number in front of the variable, that's going to tell you this is going to be a special case. And also that these are different. Okay, so if we were to keep going, and let's say we subtract 5x and subtract 5, it doesn't really matter the numbers. What happens? There is no x. It cancels out. This whole side becomes 0. This becomes negative 17. Is this a true statement? No. So when you get something like this where the variables cancel and you get something that is not a true statement, that's no solution. At the top, it has this um, note. If you were to test this, like before we were testing the numbers, if you wanted to test this, no number would ever work. You can put in all the numbers in the world and none of them would ever work. There is no solution possible. What were you about to ask? Yes. Questions on that one? We're going to do the same thing with number two. So go ahead and distribute that one. And combine those like terms. Before we keep going on this one, what stands out about this? That it's the same. It's the same on both sides. That's going to tell you this is going to be a special case. So if we were to keep going, let's say I subtract 6b on both sides and I add 10 on both sides, what happens? 
zero. We get zero equals zero, which is a true statement. But because our variables disappeared and we got a true statement, this is infinitely many solutions. Or IMS for short. So the opposite of no solution for infinitely many solutions, you can put in all the numbers in the world and every single number will work. No solution, no numbers will work. Infinitely many, all of them will work. Questions on that? Okay. I want you to try three and four, and I'll give you some time to do that, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about those, and we'll do one last thing, and then you'll have time to practice. Okay. For number three, did we get that that was or was not a, I'm sorry, that that was no solution or infinitely many solutions? Infinitely <laughs> many. Yes. And the other one. Does anyone need to see that one? Okay. What about number four? What type of solution was that? No solution. No solution. Anyone need to see that one? So with this one, because we weren't distributing, you had a couple different choices. You could have started by moving things over or started by combining. Either way, it did not matter. So let's say we started by combining like terms. If I was doing this algebraically, this is really a fraction, I can multiply this by 5, and also this by 5, so that becomes negative 10 over 5, and then I can subtract those two to get two fifths. Now, if you recognize right here, I have the same coefficient but different constants, you could stop and say that's no solution. Or you could keep going. So let's say I got rid of two fifths, and I added seven. Or you subtracted that part of it. We get zero equals something that's not zero, so that would tell you it's no solution. Questions on that? So we're going to do one last thing. Go on to the next page. Yes. If I got h equals 10, would that be like the same thing? No, because that would be an actual solution. Okay, so we're going to do number one, and then I'm going to show you how you can check the uh, special cases in Desmos, and then you have time to practice. Okay, so for number one, find the value of x so that the rectangles have the same area. First, we need to know how do we find the area of a rectangle. Not perimeter, where we added up the size, but area. We're adding length times width, yes. So if I were to multiply the length and the width of 12 times x, and the length and the width here, 16 times x minus 2, how could I set this up so that they have the same area? I need some equation, and I have to make them the same. What could I put here so that they would be the same? So we're not going to put in any numbers or uh, variables, it's just we're missing something that makes it an equation. The equal sign. Because that would also tell us it's going to be the same on both sides. So then we can solve that. 12x equals 16x minus 32. Move the 16x over by subtracting. And divide both sides by negative 4. So the x is. It would be positive. Because the negatives would cancel. Um, we don't have a unit, so just 8 for right now. 
It doesn't ask this, but if it did, yes. If it did ask us to actually find the area, I would multiply 12 and 8, or 16 and 6, what would that be? And because they're the same, we know those two. So as you're doing word problems in general, you shouldn't be getting negative numbers unless it's not really a word problem. It's just talking about numbers. Um, but anything with money, um, amounts of something, area, distance, perimeter, length, width, all of those things, you should get something positive. So if you end up with a negative, double check your work. Okay. Questions on this before I show you really quickly in Desmos? So the problems that you're going to get a solution, one, it'll look different on both sides. They'll have different coefficients or different um, numbers for the variable. So that part's the same. So I'm just going to put in some random equation like 5x plus 5 equals 5x minus 5. We'll do no solution first. When you put in something like this, nothing will appear. It's not an error or anything, just nothing will appear. So you have to put them in separately. Notice that it doesn't matter which one you put first. And you'll see that you get two separate lines. This will tell you this is no solution because you get two separate lines. We'll talk about what that actually means later. You might already know. But let's say I went and I changed this to be plus. Again, nothing will appear. But if I do that separately, because they're identical, they're going to line up on top of each other. You may have not seen that. But they should fall exactly on each other. So if it's infinitely many, they will line up on top of each other. Okay, questions on that? Okay, so you guys have the delta math multi-step equations with variables on both sides. That one is due tomorrow. Tomorrow, yes, today is Thursday. As well as the multi step equations and the real world problems, those are all due tomorrow. So be working on that. If you finish at least the multi step equations with variables on both sides and want to come finish the test or do retake work, then you can do that after you've done the multi step equations with variables on both sides.